today we're going to turn this pile of sticks into a six foot horse sculpture. So I started just by taking a walk through the forest. And all I'm doing is looking for interesting pieces of dead wood and stumps and sticks and twigs that might look interesting on the sculpture. This nearby Alvar was like a gold mine for these little stumps. Everywhere you look, you see them in little bunches. You can't miss them. I'm guessing it's either stunted cedar or juniper or something like that that only grows in these types of areas. Now I know what you're thinking, this isn't really driftwood technically but the same idea should apply in this case. And I'm not really sure what this kind of wood is called. Maybe it's called kilo wood or flotsam wood or something like that. Um, if anyone knows the correct term, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but in any case, we'll just call it reclaimed wood. The next step was preparing the horse's skeleton for the CNC. I really wanted a rearing horse position so I found this sketch by someone named Selena Bright and it's definitely my favorite. It has the right proportions and kind of what I'm going for in the final sculpture. So thank you Selena and if you guys want you can check out her stuff in the link below. You can use any vector illustration program to trace the bitmap into a vector and here I'm just sort of tracing and rearranging the limbs and grouping them so that I can later isolate them for the CNC cut patterns. I exported the outlines to DXF files and then I used those files to generate my CNC toolpaths. And now we're ready for cutting. Keep in mind you don't need a CNC for this project. The reason I came up with this whole CNC skeleton solution is because it's going to save me from having to guess what the proportions are when I go to mount the wood. And to be totally honest, um, this is a gift from my mom. Her birthday is in two days and I gotta work as fast as I can. I was able to cut this old construction wood in just a couple of passes. I'm not worried at all about the quality of these cuts because we're eventually going to dispose of these pieces as we go. So this was just to show you the first cut I did and it's of the top torso of the horse's body. Now for the fun part. It's getting late and with the help of a little coffee I'm gonna try and get this frame done before turning in. The skeleton parts are still being held in by little tabs in the wood cuts. So I just started by cutting the tabs and freeing up the pieces of the skeleton so we can lay them out and start to assemble. So all the limbs are cut out, and here I've just laid out uh, a little assembly guide I printed out, along with some images I found on the web for uh, inspiration and reference. The sawzall here was absolutely critical in this build. Um, got some moss, that's for later. Uh, just a bunch of screws of all sizes. I used over 300 screws in this project. Uh, the most useful ones were the three, three and a half inch um, and the 7 inch screws were great for stabilizing the base. I'm using scrap wood to connect the two torso pieces and I'm reinforcing them because this is kind of the center of gravity of the sculpture. I sandwiched the feet between some pieces of wood to help the feet stand up and it's also something I can screw into the base for more stability. I'm using my assembly guide to help me find the relative position and distance of the limbs to the torso and then I'm securing them into the base so they don't move. To connect the limbs together, I'm using the beefiest pieces of wood I can find 
because I want my starting core of the horse to be as strong and stable as possible. When it comes to this part of the process, I wasn't shy at all about using screws. Um, the more the better in my opinion, and the more interconnected each piece is, the more stable the sculpture will be. So for the next part, there wasn't really any rules. Um, I just kind of eyeballed the wood that I had on the ground and as I saw a piece that might be a good shoulder piece, I would place that piece. My thought process behind this was I wanted to find the pieces that looked as naturally like the limbs and parts that they're supposed to. And what I would be left with is all the wood that I could use to interconnect everything and simulate sort of the muscle um, directions and uh, placements. You can see how I'm removing parts of the skeleton as I no longer need it. And luckily I found the perfect piece for the head which almost had an eye already built into it. Now I'm shifting my focus to the legs where I can establish a really secure footing to the ground and I can finally get rid of this flimsy uh, CNC skeleton. You can see I'm taking advantage of the 7 inch screws to really interconnect everything and I'm making sure every new piece that I add is connected to the last two pieces and so on. Now oftentimes I'd look at a piece of wood and see that part of it would fit perfectly somewhere if only it were cut in half. So I ended up splitting some pieces so I could fit them. I also learned that huge colonies of fire ants live in these stumps and they get on you pretty quick and they do bite. And yes, I did learn the hard way that uh, ants in your pants is an actual thing. We're just about done now, uh, but we still have these unfortunate areas where the uh, fresh wood's been exposed, um, broken pieces, screw holes everywhere, and it doesn't look as nice as it could look. So I went and collected little pieces of wood, broken off pieces, pieces of bark, and this dollar store moss, which is actually real moss, uh, will help in hiding the crimes, as Adam Savage would say. So all I'm doing here is just using a lot of hot glue to uh, stick on the pieces of wood, the little accent pieces to hide the holes, and the moss helps to uh, mask any uh, residual glue left over. The reason why I think hot glue is a good solution for this is because it binds really well to the dry wood, and if any of the small pieces ever get pulled off or the weather pulls them off, um, the glue will still remain and it will still have pieces of wood and moss embedded in it. So it'll still serve to hide the imperfections even if these pieces fall off in the future. So after burning my fingers a few times, um, I think we're finally done here. Uh, I do really like the natural look of the wood, um, but I do think it would last longer with a bit of stain. So I'm putting a little bit of semi-transparent walnut stain, and then we'll look for a final place to put it in the garden.
So happy birthday, mom. This was a super fun two-day build. Um, if you want to see more projects like this, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and if you ever decide to do a similar project, uh, please post it in the comments. I'm sure everyone would love to see it, and uh, we'd love to put it on the website.